I'm wearing the same thing that I was wearing in my hair tutorial that you guys just saw a few days ago. You can go watch it now to see how I created this hairstyle. But today I am answering a ton of you guys' questions that I asked you for on Instagram the other day. And it's going to be a lengthy video, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, you guys, so I'm just going to be reading these as I go through the comments. I already liked some of them that I know I wanted to answer, but you guys are still commenting now on questions and stuff. So I'm going to try to answer it as concise and precise as possible. Um, but obviously, this is probably going to be all over the place because it's not going to be in like a, you know, topic focused order or anything like that. All right, so the first question comes from Lexi Jones, underscore, underscore, underscore. I think that's three underscores, maybe two underscores. I'm not sure. She asked, how do I get past a growth plateau? I drink about a gallon of water a day. I deep condition about once and some, I'm guessing once a week and sometimes even twice a week. I trim when I need, but I just seem to be stuck at this same length. Okay, you guys, so your hair growth has a lot to do with your body and your genes and all that beyond just what you do externally. So uh, I know a lot of people look to hair growth pills and serums and things like that. And while yes, to a certain extent, that stuff will help you, the best way I find to really get my hair growth kicking is changing my diet. Yes. When I started eating healthier and on a more consistent basis, plus the water, plus the conditioning, my hair grew like a weed. You guys, look how long my hair is. My hair got so long this year. Like, it's kind of crazy how much it grew. And the only thing I changed this year was my eating habits and how much I exercise. And honestly, y'all, I have not been to the gym in about a month because I have been really, really, really paying close attention to my close attention to my diet versus the exercise part because I just felt overwhelmed. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I felt overwhelmed with trying to change my diet and my lifestyle, plus adding in working out on a regular basis. And I'm like very strategic focus in the sense that I don't like doing things without knowing how to see progress, what progress looks like, how do I know if I'm on the right track, and I just did not have time to do everything at once. So I told myself to just chill out and focus on my diet and then, you know, add the exercising back into your routine when you're comfortable. And so I still get up and I'm out every day. I'm taking bolt for walks and stuff like that, but I'm not rigorously in the gym like I was a couple months ago. And I've still been losing weight. I've seen more weight loss in not being in the gym and more focused on my diet than I was before that point. So um, yeah, back to hair growth. Sometimes our hair just has those longer cycles of hair growth and everybody's cycle is different and so there are going to be times of the year where you shed a lot there's going to be times of the year when your hair grows like two inches and then for the rest of the year it doesn't seem to grow so you gotta just have to be patient also stop obsessing about it i have not obsessed about my hair growth or my hair length in over two or three years and ever since then, I have been so much more stress-free when it comes to my hair and my hair routine than ever. So just don't obsess about it. Just if you know you're doing the right things, which it sounds like you are, you're deep conditioning, you're trimming, you know, how long have you been doing that though? You know, you can't just do that for a month or two months or even three months and see drastic difference because for some people, they will see a drastic difference and other people, you won't. Your hair growth cycle may just be a longer period it just ends up happening the way that you naturally um, are just the way you are naturally built so don't obsess over it just make sure you know you're doing the right things just keep doing it and you will see you know your hair grow Jen dot Elise asked how did you know for sure that you figured out what you wanted to do in your career I know you went to school for higher education, but ended up falling in love with YouTube and being a creator. I thought I wanted to do one thing for so long, and now I'm going back and forth. How do you figure it all out? Hope that makes sense. <laughs> that definitely makes sense, and I definitely understand where you're coming from. I have been there. 
I still am there in a lot of ways. I think that our society really wants us to figure out and make decisions at age 18, 21, 25. Like they want us to determine what our entire life is going to be at those young ages. And it's like, we don't even know who we really are at 18, 21, 25. And I really feel as though the reason why a lot of us are confused when we graduate from college or we're in college and trying to find majors and stuff is that we don't know ourselves enough to make those decisions wholeheartedly. We kind of have to just roll with what we think we like and what we think we know at that time. And by all means, That's what you have to do because that's just what it is at that point. But to say that I know what I want to do and I'm already kind of at that complete success stage is not true. I, y'all, I consistently work on who I am and try to figure out what the hell I want to do. You know, yes, I'm doing this right now and I hope to do this for as long as it is fun for me and lucrative for me and I find enjoyment in it and I feel like I can still be my authentic self and connect with you guys. But do I see myself doing this right now for the rest of my life? No. And where do I see myself in five years, which a bunch of you guys asked? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know where I'm going to be in five years, ten years. And I think that that part is where us as young people, us as millennials need to stop being afraid of and just embrace. You're not going to know everything right now. You're not going to know everything at 21 or hell. I'm 26. I don't know what what I'm going to do. I went and got my bachelor's degree, which I got a bachelor degree in development and family studies. And then I got my master's degree in education policy and leadership with a focus in higher education. I'm not in either one of those fields anymore. I'm not even in education anymore. And do I regret my degrees? Do I regret making those decisions when I was kind of only working on parts of myself and working with parts of understanding and knowing myself? Absolutely not. I am so grateful and so glad that I went through those experiences because they gave me so much that is helping me every day that I do this job now. So I think more so, let's stop trying to figure out, y'all, I'm sorry if y'all can hear Bolt crying right here. He's such a baby and (laughs) will not leave me alone. (laughs) Um, And he wants attention, so just try to ignore him. I might just put some like music or something like underneath to like, you know, like hush him out a little bit. Anyway, but I think we have to just start embracing the fact that we can only make decisions to our best ability at the time that we're asked to do them. And you're not going to make the right decision every time. And that's okay. Sometimes you're going to decide to do something and then six months in, two years in, five years in, ten years in, whatever you feel like is not right for you anymore, it's not right for you anymore. (laughs) Boo! Let me get this boy, okay? Because he acted a fool now. He had to, he had to come make a cameo, y'all. He's like a baby. He's literally a baby. I'm a first time, well, I've had a dog before and I've grown up around dogs, but I've never had like a puppy by myself. Really not by myself because he's Mark and my dog, but I take care of him most days while Mark is at work. But yeah, just don't feel like you have to have everything figured out right now. Do what you feel makes you happy. And when that changes, change course now what i will say is make sure that you are putting yourself in positions to learn different skills so what you don't want to do is you don't want to go into a profession or go into a situation be in it and then walk away with nothing you want to be able to at least walk away with some skills or some tools or something that will help you in your next endeavor, even if that endeavor is not in the same arena as where you just were. There's lots of skills that I have transferred from my experiences in higher ed into what I do now, and it just works. It works. Because there are certain skills that you learn through going to school, through being on deadlines, through working with teams. I mean, there's so many interpersonal skills and actual tangible skills that will help you in the future that you may not even realize right now.
The next question is from Kiara Sky underscore. She asks, during the time when you weren't financially stable, how did you continue to reach goals and keep your head up? Who girl, how did I keep my head up during those times when things were not as stable financially? Honestly, why are you licking my chest? I had to put him down. I had to put him down. He, he just doing too much. What I did was I just focused on the small little things that brought me happiness. So whether that be when I was working in retail and I seriously focused in on, oh, I like to put outfits together. I just focused on that. I didn't focus on the fact that the only reason why I was working retail was because I had planned to go to grad school. That plan failed. I moved with my ex-boyfriend. That plan failed. And I was literally sleeping on my sister's couch and had no other options. And I had a degree at this time. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't get a full-time job anywhere. I It just wasn't happening. And I had to work retail. But I didn't focus on all that that stuff. I focused in on this is a new opportunity for me to get experience doing something different. And it was still fashion-oriented, still like in kind of like the beauty, fashion kind of space, which I've always loved fashion, always loved beauty. So I was like, all right, cool. Like, this will be my meantime in between time until I get my life back on track and so at that point I worked retail with the understanding that I was going to be back in grad school or back or in a program the next fall so I worked my butt off all year you know just kind of struggling honestly building up my YouTube channel this was back in like 2014 or so when I had started uploading more regularly after college and stuff and when I got in my program I was happy even still I struggled through my whole program like I was still financially unstable my whole program there were moments where I literally would cry to my mom like I don't have money how am I supposed to be successful without money how am I supposed to do this? Like, what is life right now? This is so hard. Adulting is hard. And I had those moments. And I thank God for my mom, for my friends that were supportive, that were there for me. And you just get through it. Every single day moves. And every single day you have an opportunity to just have a brighter outlook on life. So just know that if you're financially unstable, but you're working hard and you know that your heart is in what you're doing, you won't be there forever. Something is going to happen and God is going to work it out for you. So you just got to stay the course and keep working. Do not get lazy and do not cop out and feel like a victim and feel like nothing's ever going to get better because that's how you stay in a rut and that's how you always stay in a very struggle place. Don't stay in that place. You got to pick yourself up and get out and do something. The next question is from underscore it's Audrey. She asked, what's been the most difficult time you faced as a blogger? How did you face that challenge? So I would say the hardest moment I had with lipstick and curls with my platform and everything was in... At the end of 2015, I was really struggling with juggling my graduate program and my heavy workload. And I had just stopped working with my ex-manager of that time. Um, and I was feeling really frustrated. I was feeling really unmotivated. I had already done you know my curls over brunch series and like had been hosting events all year it had just been a really really busy year that year and I was feeling de depleted literally like I don't have no more energy I want to focus on my grad program I don't want to do this anymore and I literally said I don't want to do this anymore and I told my ex at the time, my boyfriend at the time, who's now my ex, <laughs> I told him, I was like, December 31, 2015, end of Lipstick and Girls. It's over. It's done. I'm not doing it anymore. That's going to be my date in my mind. And that's it. Because right now, it's only 
bringing me frustration. It's only stressing me out and it's not bringing me anything good at this point. So I did that and I kind of sat on it. I, it got to the middle of January. I kid y'all not. The middle of January, my job was stressing me out. My program was stressing me out. And then I get an email. Mind you, at this time, I hadn't uploaded in a couple weeks either. Or maybe three or four weeks. Like It was like just like I was just like, yes. Having one of those moments, having one of those times. I got an email from a PR agency asking me a, to be a part of a project. And I was like, what is this project? And they were like, oh, we want you to work with a dental care brand. I was like, a dental care brand? What the heck? And I look at the PR agency and I look at who they represent and I was like, oh shit, this is Colgate. And that is how I got my Colgate commercial. And when that happened, I had gotten the biggest contract I'd ever gotten. And I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm supposed to be doing this. For some reason, God gave me this blessing at my lowest hour with lipstick and curls because he knew I was really about to walk away from this before I really even got started. And it's crazy to think because I've been on YouTube for since 2010. 2010 is when I first started uploading videos on YouTube. But at the end of the day, that was exactly the time where I needed that. I needed that push to one, decide what I really wanted to do because my whole entire grad program, those two years, I had been struggling with the idea of, okay, when I graduate, am I going to go get a job in my field or am I going to do lipstick and curls full time? And I had done a little test run of just doing lipstick and curls only that month or that summer prior and I could barely pay my bills like it was not it was not a good situation I was struggling so though so that was kind of like my trial and I was like okay there's no way I could do this full-time there's no way that I could sustain myself and do this full-time so by the time the end of 2015 hit I was done and whenever the Colgate opportunity came Shortly after I got linked up with my old manager, who's sadly not my manager anymore, I'm like, ugh, because I love her, and now she's one of my really, really great friends, and I linked up with her, and she just really took me to a new place professionally, and not as a teaching me kind of, I don't know, she didn't really teach me anything that I didn't already have if that makes sense like she was one she's one of those people that helped pull out and bring out my own spirit more and pushed me to be more authentic and pushed me to be more just myself when it came to creating content and being more intentional about how I connect with you guys and she just pushed me to a place that helped me fall in love with lipstick and curls again, that helped me recognize why I was doing what I was doing. And when that shifted, when that happened, everything changed for me, everything. And it's like, I wasn't really who I was before 2016. I really, I have moments in my past where I'm like, okay, When I would, like, okay, for example, my junior year in college, I felt the most confident about myself. I felt like I was the most bomb version of myself, like my junior year in college, 2011, or sophomore slash junior, just 2011 was a really, really great year for me, and I don't know what it is, but this season in my life reminds me of who I was back then of like that feeling of of being uber confident and very sure of myself and I know that those moments don't always happen and I'm not always going to be this confident I'm not always going to have this motivation but at the same time I know that if I had it then and I have it now that means that it's something that's already in me that it's something that I just have to learn how to 
tap into more and how to live there, how to live in my best self is what I'm really trying to do in 2017 slash 2018 and just moving forward with my life. So I don't even remember what the question was. What was the question? Oh yeah, just how to, um, yeah, so that, that, that I, December, what was it? It was like November, December time of 2015 was my roughest time as a YouTuber, blogger, however you want to call me, content creator. And I stuck through it. And here we are.